welcome to the RTO Superhero Podcast with me, Angela Connell Richards, where we'll explore the constantly changing landscape of the training industry. This podcast is for anyone who works in the training industry who wants to gain insights from my over 30 years of experience in the training industry as an RTO consultant, RTO manager, trainer assessor, and entrepreneur. Let me share with you the highs and lows of the training industry and how you can avoid the same mistakes that I have made as an RTO owner and seen as an RTO consultant in both compliance and business. Together, we can change lives through education. In this episode titled Navigating the Labyrinth, Dealing with the Complexity of Vet Qualifications, We're going to dive deep into the challenges faced by RTOs when it comes to implementing effective assessment and validation practices. In part one, we'll explore the essential steps to implement the principles of assessment and rules of evidence. We'll discuss the importance of fairness, flexibility, validity and reliability in assessment and provide practical tips on how to ensure your assessment practices align with these principles. Then in part two, we'll tackle the critical task of implementing assessment validation. We'll guide you through the process of ongoing systematic validation, including when and how to conduct validations, who should be involved, and how to document and act upon the outcomes. Finally, in part Three, we'll dive into the standards and demonstrate how to how to demonstrate compliance within your RTO. We'll discuss the type of evidence you should retain, how to align your practices with the assessment system and validation plan, and provide tips on maintaining compliance practice throughout your RTO operation. So, whether you're a trainer, assessor, manager, or even a learner seeking to understand the complexities of VET qualifications, this episode is packed with valuable information to guide you on your journey. Get ready to become a superhero in assessment validation practices. Part 1. Implementing the Principles of Assessment and Rules of Evidence Step 1. Ensuring Fairness Implementing fairness in your assessment practices is crucial to provide opportunities for all students. Let's break down the steps you can take to ensure fairness. Offer recognition of prior learning. Make recognition of prior learning available to all students at the time of enrolment or before their training begins. This allows students to receive credit for skills and knowledge they have already acquired. Accommodate individual learner needs. Consider the unique needs of each student during the assessment process and make reasonable adjustments to accommodate them. This may include providing oral assessments or other appropriate adaptions. However, remember not to compromise the rigour of the assessment process. Inform students and provide clear expectations. Ensure that students are fully informed about the assessment process and performance expectations before they undertake their any assessment. This transparency helps them to understand what is expected of them and promotes fairness in the assessment process. Address skills gaps. If a student is unable to complete a required task to the level described in the assessment requirements, consider providing additional training before reassessing them. Sound enrolment processes can help identify the needs of students and prevent enrolment in courses that they may struggle to complete. Establish an appeals process. Have an appeals process in place to provide students with fair, a fair avenue to challenge an assessment decision and have it reviewed objectively. Step two, embrace flexibility. Flexibility in assessment practices allows for individual variations and recognises diverse ways of demonstrating competence. Here are the steps to incorporate flexibility into your assessments. Recognise prior demonstrated competence. Acknowledge that students may have already demonstrated aspects of the unit through other means. 
If students can provide evidence of current skills and knowledge, they should not be required to be reassessed in those areas, unless the previous demonstration occurred in significantly different context or environment. Use a range of assessment methods. Utilise various assessment methods to produce valid decisions about students' competence. Recognise the students demonstrate their skills and knowledge in different ways. Using diverse assessment methods helps to capture their competence accurately. Step three, ensuring validity and reliability. Validity and reliability are essential principles to maintain the quality and integrity of assessments. Let's go through the steps to ensure validity and reliability in your assessment processes. Assess skills and knowledge in relevant environments. Require students to demonstrate an, uh, skills and knowledge across a range of environments and con contexts relevant to the unit or module. Assessing in various contexts ensures that students can uh, apply their skills and knowledge effectively in real-world scenarios. Align assessment tasks with requirements. Ensure that assessment tasks and methods align with the specific assessment requirements. For example, when assessing a practical skill like keyboarding, focus on tasks that directly demonstrate the required skills rather than unrelated knowledge about keyboards. Observe performance in appropriate environments. Assess students' ability to carry out relevant tasks by observing them actually performing the tasks in appropriate environments. Avoid relying solely on descriptions or hypothetical scenarios when evaluating their practical skills. Maintain consistency in assessment decisions. Make assessment decisions consistently across different students and assessors within the same unit or module. Provide assessors with clear guidelines and an assessment system that details the context and conditions of assessment to ensure consistency. Establish evidence criteria and benchmarks. Develop evidence criteria and decision-making rules to guide assessors in, a judging, in judging the quality of the performance. This ensures consistent judgments about competence, including benchmarks for practical activities that encompass observable behaviours required for successful task completion. Now that we've covered implementing the principles of assessment and rules of evidence, let's move on to part two. Part two, implementing assessment validation. Step one, understanding the purpose of validation. Validation is an essential process that ensures that the quality and integrity of your assessment practices. Let's break down the steps to implement assessment validity and validation effectively. Define validation. Validation is a review of the assessment judgments made by your RTO. It aims to confirm that your assessment system produces valid assessment judgments and ensures graduates that uh, have the required skills and knowledge as outlined in the training package or accredited course. Engage with industry. Consider involving industry representatives during the validation process. This engagement helps validate that your assessment system aligns with industry expectations and requirements. Step two, understanding the standards for assessment validation. Familiarise yourself with the standards for assessment validation to ensure compliance and quality in your validation process. Review the standards definition of validation. The standards define validation as a quality review of the assessment process, ensuring that assessment tools produce valid, reliable, sufficient, current and authentic e evidence. It involves reviewing a statistically valid sample of assessments and making recommendations for improvement. Differentiate validation from other processes. Note that validation as required by the standards is distinct from other quality improvement activities like moderation. While your RTO can undertake additional activities to enhance assessment quality, focus on understanding and implementing the validation requirements specific specified in the standards. 
Step three, developing a validation plan. Now let's delve into the steps for developing a validation plan that aligns with the standards and meets regulatory requirements. Determine validation frequency. Plan to validate each training product on your RTO scope of registration at least once every five years. Ensure that your plan allows for validating at least 50% of the training products within the first three years and uh, three years of each five-year cycle. Consider specific risks and industry requirements. Industry and any specify specific risks related to certain training products and incorporate them into the validity, validation plan. Industry consultation can help pinpoint areas of particular risk at, that require more validation. Address TAE training package validation requirements. If you are validating TAE training products, ensure that compliance with Clause 1.25, which mandates independent validation by qualified validators. Submit evidence of independent external validation when applying to add TAE training products to your RTO scope of registration. Step 4. Implementing a sampling approach to validation. A valid sampling approach enables a quality review process while reducing the need to validate every assessment judgment. Let's explore the steps for effective sampling in validation. Ensure random and representative sampling. Select a random sample of assessment judgments that is representative of all judgments made within your RTO. This allows you to reliably predict the validity of assessment judgments as a whole. ASQA's validation sample size calculator can assist in determining the required sample size. Step five, selecting validators. Choosing appropriate validators is crucial to maintain the integrity and professionalism of the validation process. Let's discuss the steps for selecting validators. Ensure independence from delivery and assessment. Validators should be independent of the delivery and assessment of the training product being validated. This ensures a professional distance and integrity in the validation process. Consider required qualifications and skills. Choose validators who possess appropriate vocational competencies, current industry skills and knowledge, and relevant training and assessment qualifications or assessor skill sets. They should also have current knowledge and skills in vocational teaching and learning. Team approach to validation. Consider a team approach to validation where members collectively hold the required qualifications, skills and knowledge. Trainers and assessors can participate in validation activities as long as they are not directly involved in the specific incidents of delivery and assessment being validated. Note, different guidelines apply for TAE training package validations. Okay, let's move on to part three. Part three, implementing the standards and demonstrating compliance. Step one, retaining evidence of compliance practice. It is crucial to retain evidence that demonstrates your RTO's compliance with the standards. Let's break down the steps to effectively demonstrate and provide evidence of compliant practice. Understand context-specific in evidence requirements. The types of evidence you need to retain depends on the context in which it will be used. When adding a new qualification to your scope of registration or making changes, Provide comprehensive documentation on the assessment system, including assessment materials aligned with the relevant units of competencies or modules. Retain competent assessment items and supporting evidence. Keep completed assessment items along with the evidence considered during assessment. Assessor details and outcomes for students who have completed the unit being examined. Retain these records for six months from the date the decision on competence was made. In cases where retaining the actual item is not feasible, use alternative evidence such as photographs to justify the assessment outcome. Step 2. Aligning practices with assessment system and validation plan. 
To demonstrate compliance, it's, it is essential to show that your RTO's practices align with your assessment system and validation plan. Let's explore the steps to achieve this alignment. Confirm alignment of RTO practices. Ensure that your RTO's practices and assessment methods, including validation activities, align with your assessment system and validation plan. This alignment should be reflected in information sources such as assessment Uh, student assessments retained in appropriate files aligned with the corresponding assessment tools. Act on validation outcomes. Implement your validation plan and document uh, the outcomes. Show how the lessons learned from validation have been used to improve assessment tools, processes and practices. Involve staff in understanding and implementing these outcomes. Step three. Tips for effective and compliant assessment. 